hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to continue talking about these the dbrand dark plates 2.0 we've already done a video on this where we were comparing the ambient temperature and the ssd temperature utilizing these dbrand plates versus the official ps5 plates that your system arrives with but in today's video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the same setup but with one tiny difference because it's something a lot of people have wondered about not just with dbrand plates but generally and we have a non-dbrand version of this video coming very very soon the question is simple should you cover the ssd in your system with that little plate because a number of us when we're utilizing this let's get this plate off of here and again watch my other video if you want to see more information about putting these plates on and how it compares against the normal plates of course there's loads of reviews out there so you know pick my pick and wherever you want to go but i'm talking about this this little slot here that has your M2 SSD upgrade for your PlayStation. The system arrives with 825 gig of data and uh, available storage, I should say. And then after the OS and the UI and all the bits and bobs of the system, you've got about 600 old gig of data, which in 2022 is pretty tight. So today's question is when you realize that storage is not enough, and you invest in an upgrade SSD, which let's face it, I talked about at length on this channel <laughs> a lot. Um, the question is, when you put it inside and you put on your heatsink, is having this plate on within the dbrand ecosystem there any good? Because for those of you that may not be aware, maybe you've not done an upgrade yet or you're debating this, the SSD that goes inside there, it needs a heatsink. Don't argue with me, it does because the SSD gets very, very hot as it's processing very, very fast speeds. And its architecture in particular, the controller, the brain of the thing, needs to remain as cool as possible for it to do its job. If it gets too hot, it can degrade. It can ultimately throttle once it surpasses 70C. But even if it doesn't surpass 70C, you don't want an SSD that lives in the 50s, 60s or close to 70s all the time because that SSD will ultimately degrade more over the length of its life. And SSDs perform at their best and are at their most durable as well. People forget that second one when the longer you keep the SSD beneath 50c that's why you need a heat sink okay this video isn't about that i've made a whole video where i got very very angry i recommend you check that out this video is about once you install it in there second this thing on top of it anyone that's worked in storage for a while knows that covering an ssd particularly an ssd that's an m2 with its heatsink in a closed environment is generally a no-no. Now, Sony say, because this system takes advantage of negative pressure, where air is pulled in for, to the front, introduced into that active cool, cooling system there, and then shot out the back in that closed system, it's okay, because it's doing the coolest it can in this compact closed environment. I've never been as convinced, because this SSD, as soon as you put it in there, Sony recommend, you cover it over and now the active airflow is little more than these little tiny slits and inside there there's no ventilation either so you're encasing a hot block of metal under a bit of metal so to me that's never really worked out but the big thing for this video is when this is getting hot and you're relying on that negative pressure system the dbrand plates have got vents that big old circle right there so that introduces a now unforeseen element of passive airflow, working in conjunction with the active. No longer is it pull air in the front, negative pressure push out the back, because now we've got an active air area here. Is that detrimental? Now, in my previous video, I compared this system utilizing the original plates with the D-brand dark plates. We looked at ambient temperature by having a node placed right here. You can almost still see the sellotape. Um, we had a node placed here and we compared it against the SSD controller's reported temperature directly from the system itself via a PC. So we could see just how high or how low the temperature of the controller got. Now, in this test, it's going to be near enough the same, but with one key difference. We're going to remove this from the equation. We're going to be looking at the dbrand plates without that metal cover there. And we want to see, is that going to make it better or worse? We're going to have that SSD inside there, as you can see. And then we're going to take our plates, like so. We're going to install them like that. 
and boom, we're not going to utilize that plate. And in our comparisons, we're going to be looking at with and without this plate. We're going to be comparing the original setup with the original plate versus the new setup with the dbrand plate and no plate at all. Now, again, if you want to see what the temperature is like with this, with the plate on, look at my other video. We've already covered that. This is about this system in two different variables away from what Sony says is the default write setup. We're going to be looking at the ambient temperature during heavy write, heavy read, uh, Far Cry 6, and Demon Souls, both for the PS5. We're going to run the system for a length of time, and after that, we're going to be looking at the temperature at the start and the temperature at the end. Now, that's really important. We are not looking at which one started the call list, which one ended the call list. We're, of course, going to factor it in, and we're going to put my comment on that. But the precise thing we're looking at is the difference, because we've got to factor in ambient temperature. You've got to factor in residual heat in the surrounding environment, times of day, all of the tests for all of these dbrand videos by the way and i'll hopefully publish this online were all conducted in the same day they were conducted as follows a test was set up it was then deployed once one test was completed the system was powered down for 15 minutes with the case covers removed we didn't do more than that and then we replaced them and then restarted the next test when that test concluded we powered down the system removed the plates that was my day that was my saturday the 14th of february everyone it was a dull 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 day but unfortunately it was over the course of a whole day and although we started the testing i believe about 9 or 10 a.m all the way through to 6 or 7 p.m that meant radiation in the atmosphere, temperature throughout the day, and even though we made sure there was no direct sunlight, I say we, me, that still means that there can be small, small differences. And that's why we don't just look at the beginning number and the end number. We factor them, but we're looking at the difference. It's really important to look at the difference as they move along. And that's what we factor. So what we're going to do is go through all of the tests now. We're going to do a bunch of voiceover, go through the results together, and then we're going to go through the results together. So let's do that now, and I'll see you at the conclusion. Right, so in our first test, we were looking at performing a heavy write activity, moving around 300 gig of data from the internal PS5 SSD and onto that Seagate Fire CUDA. Now, the first thing that struck me when I begun this test was that the dbrand plate using the Fire CUDA and no M2 cover had a higher ambient temperature, almost certainly because of the extra heat coming off of that heatsink. However, the controller temperature of this SSD was noticeably lower. And when it came to the peak air time of the heavy write, the SSD in the original PS5 plates with the M2 cover hit a maximum 45 degrees in temperature, whereas it only got as high as 18, close to 19 um, uh, degrees there on the Fire Cuda heatsink uncovered. But again, as the ambient temperature rose, we can clearly see that it did have an impact of not having that cover overall. Because as we carried on into the test, the ambient temperature of the original PlayStation peaked at around about 20.8 degrees. Whereas with the Fire, uh, the Fire Cooter SSD and no M2 plate with the D brand covers, it went to 21 degrees. So although there was a smaller increase overall, it has to be said that generally the increase was still higher with an overall temperature higher on the D brand with the M2 uncovered. But still, great results for either way you look at it. Now in our second test with Far Cry 6, things seemed to be a little bit more even, at least as far as the ambient temperature was. The ambient temperature on the original PlayStation there starting at 21.6 and 20.1 there on the D brand without the M2 cover. So a lower starting temperature there, likely thanks to the downtime period in between, the heat having a much better chance of dissipating heat between each of those tests without that cover on there generating more heat to start with in the previous test. Now, when it comes to the SSD on the other hand, the SSD controller temperature was notably higher on the covered SSD there at 43 degrees at the end of the testing there of the controller SSD. Whereas in the case of the SSD uncovered by the M2 plate and with the D brand plates in Far Cry's playtime, the temperature only reached just over 29 degrees 
overall. So again, the SSD controller significantly lower in temperature to not thanks to that no not being covered by the M2 plate. And as far as ambient temperature was concerned, an overall increase of 2.4 degrees on the original plates and uh, with the cover and uh, an overall increase of just 3.1 still higher an increase though on the d plates with no m2 clearly the ambient temperature there being impacted by the additional heat being pushed out now in our third test we conducted gameplay of demon souls but it's worth remembering that between each of the tests we've done so far along with idle time at the start we left the system 15 minutes to cool down with the side plates removed and then powered back up for each test. Now we can see that in the case of the original plates lacking the extra ventilation and the covering M2 plate, the result has been that both ambient temperature and the SSD controller was higher because there was less time to efficiently dissipate that heat in that setup. Whereas we can see with the debranded plate with the ventilation and in conjunction with the fire cuda ssd heatsink not being covered that overall not only were the temperatures for the ssd controller lower overall by the end of the testing at 48 degrees versus 39 degrees but in terms of the ambi ambient temperature by the end of this gameplay session the original plate with m2 cover ended up at 26.6 degrees a 3.8 degrees increase whereas the m2 plate uh, uh, the ssd with no m2 plate cover ended at 22.2 degrees an increase of just 1.3 degrees overall a complete win there at least as far as the demon souls testing was going for the d brand and not covering the ssd and another example of how heat is being a better being given a better chance to dissipate in the case of the second setup now, by the time of our fourth test, where we were performing a heavy read action, where data was then removed from this SSD and written back to the internal PS5's own SSD, we can see that the heat that had been generated over time by a lot of these sustained actions was being dissipated less and less, as indicated by the graphs, showing that each jump and spike on the SSD controller was higher each time despite those 15 minute gaps of cooldown. Now, we can see there, as at least as far as ambient temperature was, that things started hotter on the D brand with no M2 cover there, at 22.2 degrees and resulting at the end at just over 24 degrees, an increase of 1.8 overall. Whereas in the case of the original PlayStation covers with the SSD with the M2 cover, the um, performance activity was 20.8 degrees at the start and ended at 24.3 degrees. Overall, an increase of 3.5 degrees. The original plates and M2 cover resulted in just a 0.3 increase in temperature overall in the ambient temperature because of that uh, heat sink cover there, but the SSD controller was still lower, notably in the case of not covering the SSD. How much the M2 um, plate put into that and how much of the d-brand with its ventilation I'd err towards the m2 cover doing all of the work there But otherwise let's go to the conclusion and the verdict So let's go through the results and ultimately this is probably one of the most intriguing tests I've ever done with the ps5 system looking at utilizing the original casing or the dark plate But more importantly talking about that clip there why is it intriguing? Because it kind of confirms a long-running theory that I've had here on the channel for a long time about installing SSDs inside this system and then covering them over with this sheet of metal. What you're effectively creating is a large area of heat, both with the heat sink that's kind of drawing all of that heat and energy away from the SSD into it, but then it being in almost complete contact with a metal plate is creating a larger surface area there and therefore generating a large area of heat that the fan is immediately running through in the hope that it can dissipate it but unlike a vented design or something with slits at the top this being a single sheet there isn't an easy way for the heat to be slowly dissipated off of it much like you find on heat sinks with their grooves and lines and more the result is that as we went through our tests the first let's focus on the ambient temperature inside this system with the dark plate versus that of the ps5 original plate and in almost every regard it looked more and more, although the temperature starting was slightly different, overall, in three out of four of the tests, the ambient air temperature outside of the SSD, just underneath the fan, was cooler when we weren't using this. 
because this heat sink was better exposed to the um, internal um, airflow through the system, but moreover, because it wasn't in this larger, flatter surface area, but actually using a protruding heat sink, there were better ways for the air to make its way around it, and ultimately, it made that heat area a lot easier to dissipate the heat throughout its utility. Now, when we go onto the SSD controller inside the SSD, that was a much more compelling argument there. We saw the overall temperature when it was in idle, when it was being uh, heavily written to, wrote to, I mean, heavily read from, wrote to, running Far Cry 6, and when doing Demon Souls, we saw that although the temperature peaked around 45 after all of our tests, when we were using the system with the original plates and the cover on the top, it peaked at 51. And at each tier, it more and more looked like the, not utilizing this cover in conjunction with these displays did a very very good job now <coughs> we do have a video without the displays there utilizing just the original and i've got to say although that video might not be published yet because i'm editing them all even in that video without the d brand dark plate in the equation it was still a great deal better to not be utilizing this cover in your system and ultimately for me that's the biggest compelling argument overall you if you are going to use the dark plates still do not use an ssd with this cover plate on i do not recommend it always have a heat sink you need a heat sink but this plate here i think is doing more harm than it is doing good and ultimately whether you go for an ssd like the fire cooler that has a heat sink on board or you go for any other one out there then chances are just getting a decent heat sink and not using that cover is going to be significantly more effective to you and again we've got another video coming very soon i don't think it's live yet uh, we, where we're going to be looking at the sabrent heat sink because that is kind of the best of both worlds all in a single package there but otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope you found this video helpful to stay tuned for the third and final part in this series um otherwise click like if you've enjoyed the video it really helps me understand what you guys like about these videos and make each video better than the last and click subscribe if you want to learn more as we go through more tests look at more ssds and ultimately explore this subject along with the same way we explore all the subjects of data storage both in and out of home and business use here on the channel and use the free advice section listed below in the description of it and as compares but otherwise i will see you next time